There's a naval loophole that theoretically allows Iran or China to seize one of these three U.S. Navy ships while getting themselves in the least amount of trouble with the U.S. government. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know it's not the arm to the teeth Arleigh Burke destroyer. It's the little guy. But not just because it's the smallest of the three and therefore easier to approach, get on board and bring under control. The real reason is that this vessel has a subtle yet important weakness that foreign adversaries could exploit to seize it. And somewhat legally. Because as opposed to the other two ships, this one is a drone. But why the operation of unmanned ships in blue waters falls into a legal gray area. What the US Navy intends to use naval drones for while preventing bad actors from meddling with their operations and how aerial drones could pave the way for the adoption of naval drones by the international community is not what you think. You might remember that in 2016, China's People's Liberation Army Navy seized a U.S. unmanned underwater surveillance vessel. The story was all over the news. The water drone was stolen in the international waters of the South China Sea. China has brazenly stolen a piece of American technology as a Chinese Navy ship brazenly stole. Maybe even more famously, in 2022, Iran towed away a sail drone, an unmanned surface vessel or USV operated by the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet. Again, many news outlets talked about the legal operation of these vessels in international waters and how Iran tries to seize them illegally. They were trying to tell them, hey, that's our drone. It's operating in international waters. It's not causing any kind of a, a hazard to shipping. Now, in all these scenarios, the unmanned vessels were returned to the U.S. Navy. But there's got to be a difference between seizing a drone and seizing an aircraft carrier, right? However, whether you seize a drone or an aircraft carrier, the principle is the same. This is an act of piracy. It's an act of war against the United States. All right, all right. Everybody calm down, because I got news for you. In contrast to what Western media said, both Iran and China argued that not only their actions were lawful, but also that they fulfilled their duty. They claimed that USVs pose a danger to international shipping, arguing that these vessels threaten mariner safety. And therefore, they had an obligation to remove them from water. Now, whether or not that was the real reason for their actions, China and Iran are not incorrect. And the US government knows that their drones are operating in a gray area. And that's partly why, instead of listening to this guy, piracy is an act of war against the United States. The US government has been tolerating China and Iran's quote unquote unprofessional behavior. Unfortunately for USVs, the very fact that they don't have a person on board violates one of the rules of coal wrecks. The 1972 Convention on International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, also known as coal wrecks, includes 41 rules related to safety, maritime proficiency, and good seamanship. These rules have been adopted by the international community in order to reduce the likelihood of maritime incidents. And in case of an accident, courts determine fault, cause, and liability based on the rules and coal wrecks. So what rule are the USVs breaking exactly? Rule number 5 of coal wrecks demands certain lookout requirements that USVs fail to adhere to. This rule doesn't explicitly require vessels to have a physical watchstander on board. But it does say that lookout must be continuous, proper, and use sight, hearing, and all other available means appropriate. Now, to many of us, having cameras, microphones, sensors, and a remote operator might seem reasonable and sufficient for a proper lookout. But a quick look at numerous court cases and lawsuits demonstrates that the maritime community still interprets a proper lookout as having a physical presence on board. But even if the cameras could satisfy the proper part of the lookout, USVs still would not meet the continuous requirement of the lookout. Current electronics and satellite equipment are not reliable enough to maintain a constant, stable connection between the vessel and the operator. And the following example demonstrates that this rule is not some hypothetical. This is Devil Ray. 
the USV that performed the fastest in a national run in the world by an autonomous vehicle. But do you notice anything unusual? Yeah, there are people on board. That's because there are similar provisions applicable to US waters that require maintaining a manned helm on board on all vessels at all times. This legality issue with the operation of USVs is kind of a big deal, especially considering that the US Navy envisions that by the middle of this century, up to 40% of their naval fleet would be unmanned. In fact, according to the US 5th Fleet Commander, Vice Admiral Brad Cooper, the United States and some allies plan to have 100 unmanned surface vessels available for patrol in waters around the Arabian Peninsula by the end of the summer of 2023. But why does the US Navy need all these drones anyway? In 2022, during Digital Horizon, which was a three-week unmanned and artificial intelligence integration event, many new platforms with different mission profiles were tested for the first time. This included anything from mid-sized boats that are intended to work alongside capital ships to smaller vessels that can operate independently and are mostly used to collect data from their surrounding environment, like the sail drone that Iran had towed away. The advantages of USVs over manned ships is somewhat obvious. They are much cheaper to build and less expensive to operate, making them far more expendable. This is why aside from the United States, a number of other nations, including China, are now investing in USV technology. Unmanned vessels are ideal for missions that pose higher risks to the crew of a manned ship, say a minesweeping operation but also in adverse weather conditions. In 2021, one sail drone recorded 109.83 knots of wind speed while going through a Category 4 hurricane, officially recording the highest wind speed measured by an uncrewed surface vehicle, which made it into the Guinness Book of World Records. And unlike most manned vessels that risk being capsized when the waters get rough, sail drones can upright themselves automatically due to the weight and placement of their keel. Mantas T-12 and T-8 are also examples of USVs which not only are packed with sensors and equipment, but can also self-write themselves. T-8 and T-12 are watertight and therefore would never sink, but they could flip over. To upright themselves, these drones first take on additional water to partially sink. This partial sinking changes their center of mass in a way that flips them upright. They then blow out the water out of their hull, making them float on the surface again so they can continue their normal operation. Unmanned vessels can also enhance force projection and supplement the afloat workforce. For example, arsenal ships. This could be in the form of smaller USVs that could attack smaller targets. In this case, what's being launched is a switchblade loitering drone, and it's headed straight toward its target. And it's a hit! As you can see, all the high-tech defense systems of the red wooden box have been destroyed to pieces. But kidding aside, just imagine having multiple drone ships equipped with VLS or other guided missile systems, which could accompany an Arleberg destroyer on its missions, like this one. USV Ranger and its sister ship Mariner were introduced in 2022 and are part of the Ghost Fleet Overlord, a fleet of prototype unmanned surface vehicles that the US Navy is currently experimenting with. They are of course currently manned, but the idea is to operate them remotely from a nearby manned vessel, and they are envisioned to have capabilities like refueling at sea without any crew on board. Since rearming VLS cells at sea is currently not feasible, Arsenal drones can expand the firepower of US Navy's guided missile warships. That said, US Navy's fiscal year 2024 budget documents are very clear that USVs would not be capable of payload activation, deactivation or engagement without the deliberate action of a remote off-haul human operator in the command and control loop. An example of this is the Turkish unmanned vessel Marlin, 
which in March 2023 launched a guided cruise missile to demonstrate its capabilities. In this case, the missile was fired remotely from a mission control station located on land. I should also mention a couple of downsides of USVs. One is that not if, but when they break down, USVs would be stuck in water until help can arrive. Another issue, especially with drones that require frequent communications for guidance, is signal jamming. That said, as drones move toward becoming autonomous, this issue may fade away. With all the commitments and investments that the US Navy is making to integrate USVs into their naval force in the near future, they're going to have to reconcile USV operations with Colrex rule number 5. As it stands, there seem to be three potential options, first of which is a total oxymoron. One approach is to man the unmanned vessel with lookout watch standards. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, former program executive officer for unmanned and small combatants, noted a skeleton crew would handle those things that are just not quite there with maneuvering critical situations. The statement doesn't clearly say that the crew would fulfill the lookout requirement. But regardless, manning an unmanned vessel pretty much defeats its purpose, and the Navy is unlikely to adopt such a proposition in the long term. Another approach is to keep the status quo and continue operating in this legal gray area. But this could hurt United States credibility if the international community views the Navy's USV program as a gross violation of Colrex. Plus, the adversaries could continue exploiting this loophole as they have been in the past. The third and most likely approach is to promote new maritime rules that would also cover the operation of USVs. And this won't be a first. The aviation community did exactly that for aerial drones when in 2019 the European Union regulated unmanned aircraft operations, including personnel requirements and other parameters of operation, like zoning, which bans drone operations near airports. Following those footsteps, a similar framework could be created to fold USVs into the global maritime infrastructure. This would include safety standards, requirements for avoidance systems, and defining operating zones. The lookout requirements could also be addressed at the same time, so USVs could once and for all operate alongside manned vessels without breaking any rules. <laughs>